teens camp for Feli. I was 17, 18 maybe and my father simply did not know what to do with me. I had started to rebel big way. We clashed and I think he was genuinely worried about what he was going, you know, where my future lay. So unbeknown to me, it found out about Butlin's camp, some agency in France, discussed it with my mother, and they also discussed where, which Butlin's camp they were going to send me to. And I didn't know, I was told afterwards, they didn't want me to, they didn't want me to go to a, near a major city because they thought the way she is at the moment, she meets somebody, she get married, we don't want that. My father wanted me to study, to have a career. So they chose Puffelli because basically they thought it'd be nothing but country bumpkins. There's no way she's going to fall in love with a country bumpkin. So that's our place. She's going to Puffelli. And my mother made a joke saying, oh, look at the way it's spelled, it's so interesting. So there we go, I went along, didn't have much choice. So after a very long journey, all along the coast, I arrived in Burton's camp. It was quite horrendous because after a very long, tiring journey, we were giving some tokens for a meal. It didn't even cover a proper meal. I had to pay the difference and then, early, well, bed. First thing in the morning, we had to get up, I think it was six o'clock, and we had to have our photographs taken with a board underneath our chin with a number. It was just like a convict, and you can imagine, I was exhausted, the black and white photograph with black eyes, dreadful. Anyway, I was there a week. There was a huge group of foreign students, which was quite funny. I was supposed to be there to learn English. Well, there was German being spoken, there was Swedish, there was Welsh, French, huge group of French people, but they were great. I got on really... We used to uh, gather in the chalets after work and they must have pinched the bread and butter and jam and we just sat on the floor in those chalets. One of us would replace the bulb with a red bulb. Those lads would say, French atmosphere, French atmosphere, this red bulb. And then we just have jam butties and chatted and fooled around. There was nothing really naughty going on. It was quite, you know, simple. But of course we used to go to bed late, then I had to be up at five, I was exhausted. One of the French girls, a very, very pretty girl, Anne-Marie, uh, was having a portrait painted by a local artist, I don't know how she met him. And on our day off, on the Wednesday, it was market day, she said, oh, you know, I'm not, I don't feel very comfortable, would you all come with me for the last sitting? So off we went, trooped into Mr Chadwick's studio, he finished the painting. And then he took us for a drink in a pub. We chatted and he asked each of us, you know, are you happy? Are you getting on? And of course I said, I hate it. I hate it. And he said, well, you know, if you really don't want to stay there, my wife could do with some help. They had seven children. They had a small holding. And she, she would have liked an au pair. Well, that was that. I went home. The next morning, instead of going to work, I got out of the camp, bus to Puffelli, arrived on the Mais and could not remember for the life of me where his studio was. And at that very second, as I got off the bus and stood there wondering which way I was, Mr. Chadwick's van was going round the roundabout. It was a green van. He stopped, recognised me took me to his wife, introduced me, the deal was done and he took me back to Button's camp so that I could take my stuff, my, my luggage and everything and I'd forgotten, I found a letter where I was explaining that poor Mr Chadwick actually had to wait two hours outside that camp for me to go through all the administration, I lied. I remember saying my mother was dying. I just had a phone call from France. My mother was dying and I had to go back. So after that, they were lovely to me. Because otherwise, they wouldn't have let me go. You signed a six weeks contract. I couldn't have got away. 
And uh, that was that. And that is how I started being au pair for the Chadwick family. Um, and they were a lovely, lovely family. Um, they had all the animals. I mean, it was quite funny because I remember the pony used to walk through the living room. The hens, Mr. Chadwick was continuously throwing those hens through one door. They would come back straight away through the other door. Um, but it was a, a very happy life for them all. And then eventually I stayed for a year and that's how I met my ex-husband. He was a friend of uh, the Chadwick family. And that was that. That was the end of uh, my life in France and the beginning of my, uh, my life in North Wales.